uh, stay with uh, you can uh, buy yesterday, but that mug went up after I called it. Uh, no, I didn't, but let me pull that up. Because, uh, let's see. Because I had, uh, I had brought it to y'all attention yesterday. That motherfucker went up to the sky. Yeah, what it did was it went back to the top of this, uh, resistance line. This should be, it should be in its cell zone now. Um, let me see. I think, uh, yesterday we had a harmonic here. Let me see if I can. I believe this was the uh, cell zone. Let's see. All right, so let's start from here. All right, on this particular trend, let's see if we can draw the harmonic. We got uh, point A, well, X rather. You need five points to complete draw, completely draw on the harmonic. So we got point X to A. Now the retrace from here, before price retraced and uh, changed its trend was right here. Let me just get and pull this. Right here at the 61.8. So there's our first triangle. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Now we can, let's go ahead and let's get this harmonic, uh, this Fibonacci out of the way. Now with this trend here from A to B, let's find its retracement. Its retracement is right here. So now from B to C, let's find its retracement, which was right here. And the reason I'm labeling, uh, got that area highlighted is because for this right here. So let's draw this out like this. Is that another, is that the, is that the uh, retracement, the resistance? Right. That's where price is at right now as we speak currently. Yeah, because I see that it didn't go above 135. Just kind of stayed in that area. All right. So now that we have this area, let's complete our trend. Now go ahead and now for, let's say this area here holds true as its resistance. From C to D, I'm sorry, this D is actually going to complete our harmonic pattern and give us our second triangle. Mm -hmm. B, C, D. Our target, now D always gives us our cell zone. Or buy zone, depending on what kind of uh, harmonic you have drawn. But the D zone, D level, the D point, Always, so let's put this, let's, I'm gonna change this color because this D point is actually our entry point. Entry zone, cell zone. Of course, it's gonna be pretty much give or take 25 to 50 pips in either direction.
All right. Now, if we now looking for our target form um, from that cell zone, we would simply go from C to D. And now we have Fibonacci points. Notice how this 100% falls right back at C. Notice how 161 falls at A. Hmm. Everybody see how I drew that? It's using it, uh, the harmonics is just using a sequence of uh, Fibonacci points, but they're precise and very accurate. So now with this harmonic here, this is the daily chart. So now with this being a cell zone, let's go in here on the four hour and one hour charts and see what kind of patterns we're getting. Because this is our cell zone. That's our harmonic. This is our cell zone. Right now we have, of course, we clearly see that price has been ranging in this zone, in this, uh, in this uh, zone up here. Okay, now here comes with the uh, other part of the stra uh, strategy. Now you got to take in mind that it's nine o'clock. The New York session's coming in play. New York session is known for reversals. We're at the high of the day. We're also at the ADR high of the day. And we're in a sell zone. So what does that tell you? It's likely you're wondering for a good sell. Likely, uh, it's likely time for a sell. So now at this point, all we got to do is wait on price action. Once price action gives us to go ahead, we already know all of our other parameters and, and uh, technical analysis matches up. We're just waiting on price action to tell us what we need to do. And that's what we say when we say wait for price to come to you. Do your technical analysis. Do all your 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 uh, your busy work or whatnot. But then when it comes down to it, wait for price to come to you and wait for everything to line up. So looking Pages. at this, you had on the 15 minute chart is 9, 918. This price, this price will likely reverse at the 10 o'clock hour. So I'll be waiting for the next 15 minute pattern to show me it's uh, a complete reversal. We're likely going to be waiting for a pin or a um, railroad. We can come in here to the also look here at the um the TDI uh, the TDI down below down here also giving away giving out a, a nice sell opportunity signal. Once this green this green uh, line here on the RSI crosses back down below this thirty. It'll be a, it'll be time to sell, which will likely happen right around ten o'clock, and they close at this hour. Now that the uh, analysis is done on this uh, UCAD, it's really just the waiting game. Our work is our work is pretty much done. Hmm. Uh, let me see, Pound Aussie. Now Pound Aussie also uh, gave us a harmonic uh, pattern out yesterday. Let me see. <clears throat> Give me just a second and I'll pull that one up. So when dealing with uh, patterns to use the uh, homonic scanning, we always do it off the daily? Uh, do it off whichever. Find price action on the daily. Uh, it's really, they can happen, they can appear on any time frame. So you really just have to scan until you find the uh, time frame that the pattern's appearing on. Because it can appear on the monthly, daily, it can appear on every one of them. If it appears on all of them, that's like a real good confirmation of. Yeah, but you'll, you'll never you... get the uh, same pattern painting on all of them. There would mm -hmm. typically be one pattern on uh, maybe. I saw it on like two before, but probably not like all of them. 
Yeah, you 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 might see a confirmation on two to three uh, time frames, but you'll never see like uh, a bullish Gartley on the one minute, five minute, ten minute, uh, fifteen thirty. You'll mm -hmm. never see it on all of those like that. Okay, let me go back to this terminology. All right, here on the pound Aussie, there is also an harmonic. Let's see if we can identify it. Okay, it's down here on the 15. Like, for example, this pattern here on the pound, Aussie, showed up on the 15-minute chart yesterday. And it's right here. Starting from this low right here. Fibonacci. Notice how this, start, this it starts at the bottom of this trend. X. Trend goes to A. Now, when you do this from time to time, you'll do this and the points won't match up. That's not a, then that makes it not a valid pattern. So if you ever uh, find, your, uh, find some points to work with and try to pull your Fibonacci's and draw the pattern out and it doesn't match up, then it's not a, a valid pattern. Okay, so we go from here to here. Now look at this retracement here at the 61.8, right here. So there's our first triangle, three points. All right, then from here to here, we retrace back to the 61.8 on the upside, right here. So now we got B to C. B to C takes us to D, which was down here at the 161. Would that be considered, um, my bad to interrupt, uh, Another triangle right there from the um how you say it? at the yeah that's what I was gonna say. And this, of course, right here gives us another buy zone, which we bought. I bought that earlier, but I've already taken profit on that trade there. Buy zone here. Um, now your TPs come in play when you pull your fibs from C to D. C to D. My TP was taken right here, right below the 100. This zone right here. Now, considering the fact that price is bouncing right here at this level here, could likely indicate that price could actually be taken for another spin here, like this. Because mind you, um, over here, based on the Fibonacci from C to D, my 161 extension is right here.
So we would be we could be looking at this for the rest of the day on the pound dog. So what I'm going to do is that likely in the next 30 minutes or so, I've likely grab another position on this pound Aussie long. News must have hit because yeah, you can uh, drop. Uh, you, <clears throat> Euro just came out and dropped dramatic. Yeah, the dollar is gonna uh, the dollar is gonna drop. So you can likely going to fall and pound USD, Euro USD, all those are likely going to rise. Let's go take a look at them. But yeah, there was some news in the home, the uh, home sales and PMI comes out at 930 and 10 o'clock today. All right, now looking here at this uh, Euro USD, um, it's of course, like I said, nine o'clock, uh, coming into the New York session, getting ready to start, and we're already at the ADR low. So that's already a, a signal telling us that we should be looking for longs today. So it's basically a stop point? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that a stop. Uh, well, it, it hit its it hit the TP for the seller. So now for this next session, it's time to buy. It's already hit its range, so it can't go, it's not gonna go much further. So I wouldn't necessarily stop when I just say target met for sellers. All right, I don't see a harmonic up here anywhere here. Uh, but yeah, Tony, so you can likely get ready to sell that UK, like I was uh, saying. I'm gonna uh, likely sell that around 10 o'clock. It's starting to give, give it signs of a uh, in a way in just a moment. I made sure I, I got in good profit, moved my stop losses up so it could just hit. And I'm just wait until the next hour to get in that same. So figuring out harmonic patterns is always going to be an A to B, a B to C, and a C to D. Is there like going to be like a, a middle point? Uh, yeah, it's pretty much A, B, C, D pattern. Okay. And you need uh, five points. And that's okay. five points, uh, three swings. How can we figure out our stop loss on the harmonic? Um, you don't mind going over that again. Like right here on this harmonic, your stop loss would go. Here. If this was your buy zone. Your stop loss would go behind it. Do it have to be a certain amount of pips or it's just automatic underneath a certain amount of pips, you just want to make sure it's behind structure. Okay. So for example, here it's just simply make sure it's behind. Make sure it's behind this structure down here. And it's behind any structure that you can see to the left. Make sense? 
That's where you should always put your stop loss. You should always put your stop loss behind structure. And entering at the higher low of the day, your stop loss is likely going to go behind the four-hour structure. Anybody got any questions about that? I don't think we have a lot of news in the market. I looked at a bit of it. Let's see if we got else we got coming out. Let's go take a look at the news. All right, today we got the top five things to look at in the market. Let's take a look at that. Top five things to look at in the market. After you finish looking at news, can you look at UJ? Uh, yeah. Damn, the euro and the dollar is falling heavy. Man, the euro is just euro plummeting. Is uh, okay, here's UJ. UJ is breaking my trend line to the downside. Do you uh you want to sell? You in a short on UJ? Uh, no long. Okay, you just got in. Have you been in for a while? Yeah. I got in at uh one oh nine ninety ninety nine six. Okay. Okay. And then no, yeah. One oh nine ninety nine six. Nine nine six. Okay. So yeah, you just got in real long. Now I believe you, UJ, uh, someone here just broke my trend line to break down to the downside. So I expect it to actually drop another 10 pips down lower. So they uh, coming down off of that USD spike that you just saw. Well, we didn't just see it here, but it just happened on the board. That's what shifted the rest of these currencies. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay long on this uh, New Zealand and uh, short on Aussie New Zealand. I'm gonna go short on uh, what is that pair? I'm gonna go short on UCAD in about another thirty minutes. There's a lot. There's some news. Let's see. There's actually some. Let me pull this news back up. Okay, top five things to look at the market. The PMI deepens trade war gloom. The PMI is what just came out about uh, 10 minutes ago for the US dollar. The PMI um, weighs heavily on the uh, trade. So as you see right here, it says PMI deepens the trade war gloom, which uh, PMI it strengthened the dollar, but I don't think the strength is gonna hold on the dollar 
due to the volatility with the trade war. I think it's going to backfire. Um, here we see another round of gloomy business surveys in Europe reinforce fears that the effects of the U.S.-China trade war conflict are spreading across the world economy. The Eurozone Purchasing Managers Index for manufacturing fell to 47.7 in May, disappointing hopes that the worst of the slowdown was over. Germany's info businesses also also wor worsened. That showed the decline in the euro just a moment ago, as well as the decline in the pound. Not much of not as much of effect on the pound as it did the eurozone entirely, but we just saw that effect take place on the euro at the open of this New York session. That actually just happened. That's that that's that uh, that deep deep fall you guys are looking at right now on the euro. Uh, our Wall Street was set to low, uh, open lower. Stocks are, are, are a little wavy. That's probably why you see U.S. 30 falling all morning. Um, the Fed minutes indicate no, uh, no rate change soon. So that is, this right here is ultimately going to correct the, dot, the PMI spike. So that PMI spike that we just saw is likely going to get corrected by this uh, data here. So the Fed. Uh, indicating no, no, no interest hike. Um, FS signals long, that has to do with stocks. And there we have it. So let's go back over here. Let's look at this. Euro, this UCAD. Here we got UCAD just hit, remember it just hit the retest of the, um, the high of the day. And sitting there at its ADR high. And look at TDI down below, the oscillator. 9.45, I'm taking this short. All right, 9.45, I'm taking this uh, short. And I'm actually going to have to wrap the session up a little early because I have a couple one-on-ones um, -on -ones I have to do today. But I'm taking UCAD short at 9:45. And Wesley, we'll meet we'll meet up again at 12. I got one to do, and then we'll meet up again at 12. All right, cool. Man. But as of right now, I am still long on New Zealand USD, short Aussie New Zealand, uh, getting ready to go short on USD CAD, and. I'm going to take a long on pound Aussie. I'm actually going to go ahead and get in that pound Aussie now. So I'm in the pound Aussie. Yeah, I got in at like 8, 3, 8, 9, 5. Pound Aussie. Hell yeah, I'm in there too now. <clears throat> so pound Aussie, are we buying? Pound Aussie, yes, I'm long. Okay, I'm gonna get in right now. Uh, I'm gonna put my TP at eighty four six. And Aussie. I'm gonna put my stop loss below the uh, last hour. And what now? At one eighty three six. One eight four six. The stop loss is at one eighty three seven. Okay. Uh, in New Zealand, I'm short. Uh, here's the harmonic that we had on New Zealand. It's a Gartley, uh, Aussie, New Zealand. Um, I'm looking for this come come down here and fill this gap in right here. Uh, with Aussie, New Zealand, my TP is uh, 1.0556. Now, this isn't going to give us a lot of pips, of course, because the New Zealand pair is a little uh, different, but this is still about 30 pips. Same with Are you getting into all cat now? Uh, USD is likely only going to give us 
about six by one, about 30 pips as well. I see on a four hour chart um, for New Zealand, it's a falling wedge. On the four hour here? Yeah. Um, use your, um, if you can find the little annotation thing and mm -hmm. draw it on there real quick. All right. Oh, that's, oh, no, nah, I saw it on the, um, all right, hold on, let me see. All right, let me see. I think you're talking about maybe the, 